I'm Nico. In this video, I want to show you why and how I'm using a piece of hardware called a Stream Deck. And if you don't know what a Stream Deck is, well, in a sense, it is just a little keyboard. That's it. But it is very powerful because of the software that comes with it. And I'm going to show you why um, I'm using that and how I set it up. As you can see from the picture here, I am using two Stream Decks because the, the good thing about it is that you can plug as many of those as you want. They come in various shapes and sizes and the two that I use are the Stream Deck XL here above my keyboard and the Stream Deck, I think it's just called Stream Deck, uh, it's the original version that is here. But first, let's talk about why I'm using one of those. See, when I work, I like to keep my hand, my right hand on my mouse and not having to lift it or on my MIDI controller. So I have plenty of functions in my door which is Cubase, that are uh, assigned to uh, f functions that are assigned to key commands. For, for example, I have one, it's control command P. So if I'm working and I'm in the moment, I'm, I'm doing my thing or I'm playing something, I don't want to have to lift my hand to press uh, a key command or a, a, a group of keys to to launch a function. I want to be able to keep my hand on my keyboard or my mouse and just press a key command. So what I've done is that I mapped Cubase to only use shortcuts that I can press with one hand. So for example, I don't know, command S or control T or whatever. But what I figured out is that after a while is I run out of keys and commands and those that I don't use that often, I tend to forget them. So to circumvent that problem, what I've tried to do is I developed uh, an iPad app to, to be able to, to, to create and assign shortcuts. So I had my iPad here on the left of my keyboard and I could assign more commands than I had on my on my typing keyboard. Problem with that is there is no tactile feedback. So I was looking at my screen and I wanted, I don't know, to show the the, the CC lane for for vibrato in my in my door and I had to look to take my eyes of my screen to look where the key was. So I was looking for something that could give me some tactile feedback so I can place my fingers on it and that I don't have to look at it and I can stay focused on my screen while still having my right hand or on my keyboard or on my mouse. And that's where the Stream Deck comes in because the Stream Deck is uh, its exactly that. It's a, it's a shortcut launcher with tactile feedback, and it's much more than that, but we'll get into it. So to show you how I'm working with it now, I will first show you how I set it up, and I'm going to show you this using Cubase. But if you are using any other kind of inferior DAW, this would work just the same because as far as I know, all DAWs from Logic to Digital Performer lets you assign key commands to functions. So before you can use your Stream Deck, you need to do a bit of work inside your DAW. So let's look at that. Here I have uh, Cubase opened and what I will do is that I will prepare one command that we are going to use with the Stream Deck. So I go to Edit, and I go to my key commands here. 
And here you have a list of all the functions that are available in Cubase. And for each of those, you can assign a keyboard shortcut. Quick tip, if you want to learn your DO through and through, whether it is Cubase or Logic or anything, I would seriously advise you to open your key commands manager and to go through the list of them all. So this way you will know exactly all the commands that your DAW can do. Anyway, this was just a quick tip. So let me show you something. Well, I, I use Cubase comes with a built-in notepad, for for example, and I use it a lot to to take uh, to take notes about my current project. So when I save my project, all my notes are saved with it. So usually I copy the brief in it or some some stuff for me to remember later. So if I go to project here, I can click on notepad and see it's opening a notepad that is attached to Cubase, but if I quickly have to write something and I don't want to be searching for uh, where was it? Was it in window or workspace or project project? Oh, there it is, notepad. I would like any of you would, I would assign it a key command. So let's do that. I go to my key commands because the notepad is the last function that I've used in Cubase, it is already selected. If it is not the case, you can search for it here in the bar and I will assign by clicking here a key command. And this key command, because I am not going to launch it from my typing keyboard, I can make it something really complicated that use all 10 fingers and both hands. So let's say that for launching the notepad, I want command Alt, Shift, and N. So command option, Shift, N, and I assign it to it. I click OK. So now if on my keyboard, I press command option, Shift, and N, it's opening my, key, my notepad. And if I press that again, it's closing it. Right. Now that's where the stream deck comes in. I can click here at the top on the Stream Deck uh, configuration app, and I click on Configure Stream Deck. This is an empty profile that I made. I called it Stream Deck Demo, and this is what you are presented with. So the first thing that I will do is I will delete this Welcome button here. I will go to System, I will search for hotkey. I will place it, let's say here, and I will say that the hotkey that I want to assign will be command option shift N, and I'm going to call this notepad. And frankly, that's all there is to it. So now I can go back to Cubase and see my notepad shortcut appeared here. It's the only shortcut that I have at the moment. And when I press it, I have my notepad and I press it again and my notepad disappears. But that is not all. And this I found really powerful. You can create sequences of commands with your Stream Deck. So let's try to find something relevant to do. See here, I have a audio track. It's called Low Booms. So usually what I like to do is to press D, this is the shortcut that I signed, to zoom on it, and then I press E to open the editor at the bottom so I can move the start, uh, the, the event start, so it will snap to, uh, to the grid. This is how you do it. Right, so this is these are two keys that I have to press. It's D and then E. So you could totally assign this to your Stream Deck. Let's see how it's done. 
So I go back to configure Stream Deck, and here in the Stream Deck menu, I can say multi action, and I will put it here. And I have this panel that is empty at the moment, and here I can drag as many actions as I want. I've only shown you the hotkey, but there are plenty, uh, plenty of uh, comments and action that you, you, you will find in here. There, there is even a marketplace with, uh, with uh, more actions that you can download from Elgato website, which is the, the company that makes the Stream Deck. Anyway, I have this. I will take a hotkey and I will say that the first one was D to zoom on the, the, the event. And then I can assign a second hotkey. And here we will say it's E, and that is to open the editor. And again, that's all there is to it. I can name it. Um, I will say Zoom plus editor. And here I have it on my stream deck. So let's try that. I select I select the, the event here, and now I will just press my Zoom plus editor button. And there you go. It just completed the the, the sequence of two actions to, to, together. And that is that is really cool. So these were just two little examples. So let me show you maybe some of the stuff that I'm using. As I said before, you can have multiple profiles, but you can also have multiple pages, or you can have, let me show you, you can have folders, and these folders can themselves contain shortcuts, and you can have folders of folders, which makes it virtually limitless. Like you, if you want to add 150 shortcuts, well, you can. So let's go back to my main profile here. And I have a few pages and folders and, uh, and comments. I will show you uh, some of them. So for example, see here in my template, all the unused tracks, I, I don't want to, to see them. So on my stream deck, uh, I made a macro using uh, Cubase PLE, and I can hide those that are not in use, right? And if I press this key again, now I will see the disabled tracks. Another thing is, yeah, here for the lanes, for example, I have one button to show the velocity, I have one to show the CC1 curve. I have one to show the sustain pedal. I have one to show my expression maps. Uh, actually, here there are no expression maps. Let me take a track that will have expression maps here. So you can see I have one where I can see modulation, expression, and velocity. What else? Oh, yeah, I have one, for example, let me just draw a bit of CC1. I have one that will allow me to copy CC1 to CC11 with just the press of one key. I have the latency compensation menu here. You will see it will turn it on. There we go. That was the small orange icon here. I have one that is... Um, let me do this and quickly play something. I have here the retrospective recording, so I can directly work with that. I have one to delete the retrospective recording. I have one that is used for bouncing uh, MIDI events to audio. Oh, I have one that is really useful for film scoring. I have this key here that lets me move the transport by exactly one frame. So I can go back and forth. 
And yeah, that's it. So uh, uh, I guess you you get the idea. I have one, I don't know, to just disable a track. I have one that allows me to open the 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 patch that uh, that I'm working with uh, at the moment. I have one to set the cycle. Uh, I have some that lets that let me move between different markers and so on and so forth. You may be wondering where these icons come from. Well, if you just go to Google and you type Stream Deck icons, you will find uh, a bunch of those. But the, the, the cool thing is that you can also make your own. And I went to the extra step of using this software is called Sketch. Usually people use it to prototype user interfaces for iPhone or website or stuff like this. It is a, it is a vector drawing program, but let's see. For example, if I take this one, see, I've just drawn the, the different, the different icons and then I can export them as a PNG. So it keeps the transparent background. And then when you go to your configure stream deck app, you can just take your PNG and drop it here on the, on the action. So I hope this was useful and it gave you an idea how you can use a stream deck with your DAW and how it can speed up your workflow. Speaking about speeding up workflow, I think that now would be a great time to stop watching videos and go write some great music.